This is for the grudge. Hello everyone, my name is Danny. This review is going to be for the movie called The Grudge. This is a 2020 film. It is rated R. It's directed by Nicholas Pesci. And it stars Andrea Riseborough, Damian Bashir, and John Cho. The runtime is an hour and 33 minutes. And the description. Producer Sam Raimi brings us a twisted new take of the horror classic. Based on the film, Juan the Grudge. After a young mother murders her family in her own house, a single mother and detective tries to investigate and solve the case. Later, she discovers the house is cursed by a vengeful ghost that dooms those who enter it with a violent death. Well, um, this is the first theater movie to see in 2020, so Happy New Year. And this is my second review of the year. And um, so I was sort of excited about seeing this, but it's the only new one that we got in theaters. So I kind of had to see it. And when you have that feeling about you, you almost feel like, you know, that you are being drugged to watch it and you just don't want to and you kind of feel like you have to put up with the movie. So mm -hmm. in that feeling and in that sense, um, disappointment and uh, other feelings <laughs> come along with this movie. So we'll get into it. Um, the beginning is so weird. And the thing that I felt when I left this movie was that the reason why people did not like It Chapter 2 this last year was because it went, okay, this person's story, uh, this person's story, this person's story. It was almost the same thing every time, you know? So when I watched this movie and it had this person's story and this person's story and it seemed to just kind of go in a circle... The thing that made It Chapter 2 good for me, and maybe other people didn't care about or thought it was a bad thing, but for me it was good, is that I didn't mind It Chapter 2 recurring stories one mm -hmm. after another because I thought they were interesting, I thought they were scary, I thought they had a point, I thought they had deeper meaning, uh, stuff like that. The thing that makes the same element bad for me in The Grudge is that the first, what, hour, hour and a half, you have no clue what's going on. None. I don't want to hear anybody say that they did because I had no clue what was going on. So once I figured out what was going on in The Grudge here, I look back and I say, oh, okay, well, that makes sense, I guess. But I was so bored and I was so tired from watching this boring stuff for an hour that I just didn't care after the hour point. When I finally figured out things and what was connecting and what wasn't. And I mean at least it got to that point. So the whole movie isn't terrible. But I have no idea why they started the way they did. And I really think that they, if they were going to make... There's such an olden setting. Just say it was in the 1970s or something like that. The second that they flashed up any year from 2000 forward, I just didn't agree with their setting. You know, they had a TV that had a push power button. They had all this old looking carpet and clothes and stuff. I'm like, this, the, the feeling of the movie was completely disagreeable to each other for the timeline that they said they were following. That's my opinion. The other thing that I have an opinion about is that after we get done with this frustrating hour that it begins with and just is completely a mess, it does get better. Um, I was sitting in a pretty full theater, especially since it was the first night out released on a Thursday, and uh, things got pretty scary. Things got pretty tense. There were some good jump scares. There were some good storyline things. 
There were some good surprising moments uh, between characters and their relations. And the movie does get better. Um, I, you know, kind of sat up a little bit more straight after the hour mark and paid more attention and things got better. So for it to improve like that just all of a sudden and get a little bit scary and get a little bit interesting, that's great. And for it to have the ending that it did just ruined everything. You know, you just get to that point and you walk out of the theater and you're like, what the heck? You know, so that's all about all the comments I heard walking out of this thing was, are you kidding me? And it's not a good feeling to have when that's what people are talking about from the movie you just watched. So you tend to forget about the good points. You forget to you tend to forget about the beginning. But, you know, then you start getting upset for no reason on the 27 minutes of previews, which is a complete joke. And uh, so it's just not worth it. You know, this movie's just not worth it. It's not worth people's time. It's not worth their frustration. It's not worth the fact that it's a remake. It's not worth, you know, these actors that we count as talented, you know, Cho and some other people. And to be in this ridiculous movie just doesn't, it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your frustration. Watch something else. Do something else. It's just not worth it. I'm sure it's going to get all terrible reviews. I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of chap- uh, chatter about how awful the ending was. It's like if you're going to show stuff, just show stuff. You know, Don't be a coward out and <laughs> take the easy way out like that. That's ridiculous. So I was thinking about making this one of my worst movies of the year right away because this is the first one and it's really bad. But like I said, after the hour mark, it does get interesting. It does get some good scares. I've got some good screams and talk, you know, during the movie and uh it it's worth watching sometime down the road, you know, watch the original Grudge, watch the remake of the Grudge if you really want to and you want to spend your time on it, great. Um maybe it's a little worth seeing in theaters if you can pay the lowest dollar amount, like $5 or whatever, and maybe just get a drink or something, but that way you experience it as a group and if anybody you know has some reactions like my theater did with the screaming and the talking about some of the scarier things that are in here, then maybe you might get something out of it. So that's the only way I can suggest watching it in theater though. So I don't think it's as bad as people are going to say that it is and I'm sorry if I'm not painting a very bright picture of it, but... I think C- is fair. I don't think it's like a terrible, terrible movie. It makes sense once you look back on it. It makes sense once you walk out of the theater. It's just frustrating and disappointing. And for a movie to be like that, people aren't going to gravitate to it. People aren't going to say it's all that good. They're probably going to smear its name. So that's just kind of what happens. But you can't say that they weren't asking for it, doing what they did on the ending, and having the most confusing beginning of a movie I've seen in a while. So... I'm going to give a C- to the grudge. Don't get all worked up about it, but maybe give it a chance. Thanks a lot, guys. My name's Danny. If you like this or any of my other videos, try and get some of them watched. Like and subscribe to my channel if you would. And have a great 2020 and a great new year. And thank you. We'll see you next time.